a giant marlin, the great white whale, a great white shark. Welcome or welcome back. On this channel, I like to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, specifically the Feywild, as I borrow from folklore and literature to add details to the world of D&D. Today's video could fit within the material plane or the Feywild, just depending on how you want to do it, so take this as you will. And if I sound all nasally, it's because I am a little sick. I have been excited about the beginning of fall, but I need to remember that it's still summer. And so I started thinking, what summer-themed topic could I talk about and what's more summer than the ocean? So today I'm going to pull storylines and encounters and NPCs from literature about the ocean. Specifically, I'm going to talk about Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea, Melville's Moby Dick, and Benchley's Jaws. Did you know that was a novel? So for each of these stories, I'm going to give you a brief summary of the story as a whole, aka this video is full of spoilers. And then I'm going to talk about how I think they could be translated to D&D as either small little snippets or big storylines. Our first story, The Old Man in the Sea, is by Ernest Hemingway. It was published, no, written in 1951 and published in 1952, I think. It's about Santiago, a fisherman who catches a marlin that drags him out to sea as he struggles to catch it. At the beginning of the story, Santiago is considered unlucky. He has not caught a fish in 84 days. I believe the family even starts to send his own son out on a different fishing boat. So one day Santiago wakes up really early, he gets on his skiff, and he heads out to sea. He catches a small albacore in the morning, but that's it. Then he catches a marlin, and that marlin starts dragging him out to sea fast. Day one or two, he goes ahead and eats the albacore because he's getting hungry, and it's just pulling him further and further out. He keeps trying to reel it in. It keeps putting up a fight. He finally realizes this marlin is bigger than his boat. On the third day of having this thing hooked, it finally gets close enough that he's able to harpoon it and tie it to his boat but there's so much blood that it draws sharks to the area. The first shark takes a large bite out of the marlin. The man stabs at the shark. I think maybe he kills it. No, I can't remember, but he's stabbing at the shark. Of course, more sharks come. And as he's trying to get back to where he came from, travel back through the ocean, more and more sharks keep biting away at this marlin. By the time he gets home, it's gone. The family sees the size of what was once this marlin, the bones of it, and they feel horrible because the man's also in terrible shape at this point. The son apologizes, says he's going to go fishing with him from now on. And even some tourists notice the bones and comment on how they think it's a shark because it's just that big. So how do we translate this to D&D? For all three stories, I have an option for the party being on the coast and like still on land or an option where they are actually on a ship traveling the sea. It sort of depends on what kind of campaign you're running and at what point in the campaign you're at, but all of these could work in either direction. If the party is still on the coast, maybe as they are traveling the shoreline or at the fishing docks or just around, they find an old man with a boat and on the side of this boat is strapped a giant fish skeleton. If they ask him about it, the man will tell him the story that you just heard. You can basically tell it verbatim. I put more detail in it than this old man would really have to share, but he tells them the story of him being dragged out to sea by this giant fish, how he has horrible, horrible luck, how he can't feed his family, he's old. Maybe the man is sincerely unlucky and he's been cursed somehow. Maybe the party can figure it out. Or maybe he's not cursed and he's just like genuinely unlucky. Maybe the boat itself is cursed or something the man wears, some sort of pendant that he picked up to try and give him better luck for fishing. I don't know, you could do something with that. Or the party could ask about the size of the fish and the man could tell him that there just happened to be a lot of big fish in the area, that it's strange, it's no one knows why, but it's just a common occurrence here. If that's the whole point of this site, this encounter, then it sort of clues the party into something interesting happening, which by the way, I'm connecting to each of the stories, this concept of larger than life fish and the different ways you could play that out. If your party is already out at sea on a boat, maybe they witness this story in action. They see an old man fighting and being dragged along in like the middle of the ocean by a fish that's bigger than his boat. And of course, in all of these instances, it's really up to your party whether or not they decide to help him. I like to imagine most parties would, but who knows. Our next story is the novel Moby Dick. 
you know the classic, written in 1851, exactly a century before The Old Man in the Sea. It begins with the famous first line, call me Ishmael. Ishmael is boarding the whaling ship captained by Ahab, a man on a revenge mission. Years ago, Captain Ahab, on his whaling adventures, encountered the great white whale Moby Dick and in doing so, lost his leg. The whale bit it off. It is now replaced with a prosthetic made of whale bone, and Captain Ahab can even smell Moby Dick when he's close enough. He knows where that whale is. This is actually the only book on this list that I've read. I read it in high school, and let me tell you, it's beautiful, but it also takes a really long time on some smaller, slower details, but I think it's worth a read, especially if you're trying to get in a like seafaring mindset if you want to get more familiar with especially whaling if you want to know more than you ever knew about whaling read moby dick the story starts on land and as they head out to sea it involves a number of encounters with other ships particularly whaling ships and other whales it's a whaling ship so they hunt some down i think kill one or two and then finally it ends with them encountering Moby Dick. I'm actually not going to tell you how that one ends. I think you should find out. But for D&D, I think there's a few things you could do with this story. No, I know there's a few things you could do with this story. It's so good and so classic, and also your players will probably pick up on what you're doing for this one, and I think that could be even better if they do. If the players are in a port town, I think in the tavern one night, they should hear either from a bard's song or over here at a table or hear from a member of the ship's crew. This story of Captain Ahab or whatever you rename him to be and his seeking revenge on this giant white whale or other massive sea creature, but I, I think you should leave it a white whale. Maybe your party is trying to get a ship to reach another part of this world, and they don't realize yet that this is the ship that they will be chartering, that they'll be taking. It's a whaling ship that's just picking them up and dropping them off along their way. If this is a straight up ocean story, maybe it's the ship that they're supposed to be on the entire time that they are traveling, or if they're already on the ocean, maybe they encounter the ship along the way. I think any of those scenarios could work. As long as you have the basic principles down, you could encounter this on land or sea. But what about Captain Ahab? I think he should be a crazed captain. I think he should have a prosthetic whalebone leg, and I think he should be able to smell Moby Dick. More specifically, had this idea today, I think that Captain Ahab should be a ranger. Stay with me. I think he should be a ranger whose favorite terrain is the sea and whose favorite enemy is beast, specifically any sort of ocean creature. And rangers can have a primeval awareness where when they're within a certain distance, I think it's a mile of fey, fiends, undead, aberrations, I don't remember the full list, but when they are within a mile of any of those things, they can sense it. They have to use an action slash a spell slot, but they know if any of those exist within a mile. And I think that Captain Ahab should have some sort of supernatural connection specifically to this whale, where within a certain distance, he is able to actually pinpoint its location. So Moby Dick himself, you can find stats for whales for D&D, &D, or I'm assuming other RPG games, and you could just beef them up make Moby Dick a little bigger, make him pretty aggressive, but why is he like that? He could just be a big boy. He could also be, if this is in the Feywild, an archfey of a certain area of a fey sea, or maybe it's some sort of monster sent by an angered god. And I have one more idea for why he could be big and dangerous and why all these fish could be big and dangerous, but I want to wait till the end when we've talked about Jaws so you can get the full picture. Now, for our last book. Jaws. I wanted another ocean themed book to talk about today so I just googled like books about the sea, literature in the sea, and Jaws came up. So for this summary I am summarizing a Wikipedia page. I haven't actually read it myself but if you've seen the movie you already know quite a bit about it. And even if you haven't you know quite a bit about it. A giant shark is eating people. But the novel by Peter Benchley was published in 1974. It's our most recent novel on this list. It is about the great white shark who is eating people on a local beach and the three horrible, awful men who decide to kill it. The shark in the movie is like megalodon size 
In the book, apparently, it's about 20 feet long and 5,000 pounds. A few notes on this story. One, I like the Megalodon interpretation. I think the bigger the better. I am personally obsessed with Megalodon movies. Give me a giant shark eating everything and I'm happy. And two, I don't quite remember why they wanted to leave the beaches open in the movie, but apparently in the book, they want to leave it open because the mafia has vested interests. Why is the mafia in this? Now, here's what I want to do with all of these big creatures, all of these big stats. I mean, really for any of these, you could take a marlin, a whale, a shark, and just make them bigger and more dangerous. I also really like the idea that all of this started when there was a shipwreck. Also, maybe a little corny and no, classic, not corny, classic. I think there should have been a shipwreck. And when that ship wrecked, for some reason, all of this started up. And it should be because there's an item on board the ship, some sort of magical item with properties that grant strength, but also create a lot of aggression and maybe has some sort of other magical property that would make it desirable. It is pretty tempting. I don't know, I haven't designed the item, but I think there should be something like that on this ship that got sunk to the bottom of the sea. And creatures that came across this wreck or got within a certain vicinity got really big, really fast. Maybe some version of the mafia has moved into the coastline because they want to discover the secret behind these really powerful creatures. Maybe they've heard rumors that an item like this might exist and they are hiring boats or adventuring parties to go out and look for it. But a storyline like that would tie all of this together. It would make it so that the party has a vested interest in probably getting the item first, either for themselves or to protect it in preventing others from reaching it and also encourage them to go out on the sea despite knowing or even because they know that there's some pretty intense stuff out there. You already have at least three monsters. You have giant marlins, you have a giant whale, and you have a giant shark. I'll let you decide which one's the worst. But those were my summary ocean themed ideas. What do you think? I personally was only a little bought into this video idea at first, but then as I started researching, I started realizing how cool this could all be. I. I don't know, have you done anything like this? Have any of you run like an ocean theme campaign? But please like the video and if you want to see more videos about different Feywild or Material Plane D&D encounters inspired by literature and folklore, then also subscribe. But more than that, I hope you have a great whatever it is and I will see you next time.